Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Alex League and Friends NFL podcast. I'm your host today, Brett Giddings, and we have a special guest on today, Richard. How you doing, Richard? I'm good, man. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Falcons um, a little bit here, have some other things for you guys. Uh, I know we've gotten a little bit through the season um, with some – talk about the draft and a little bit of off-season things with some drama that's happened. So getting into things here now, the Falcons selected with the fourth overall pick, tight end Kyle Pitts. Um, recently, I mean, there's been a lot of talk about him being extremely, you know, touted when it's uh with his last year at Florida and the way that you know people looked at him in the draft scouts really liked him um he brings a pretty big presence obviously to any offense that you would have him on uh but well uh networks Daniel Jeremiah has stated prior to Pitts taking an NFL snap that he believes that he's a hall of fame tight end um you know that's raised a little bit of questions some people agree other people a little bit weary about it. What are your thoughts about that? As far as Kyle Pitts goes, I mean, we know that he's a heck of a player coming out of college, going into the NFL, and a huge pickup for the Falcons in general. But to say that he is already Hall of Fame, you know, stature, I, I think is a little bit too far-fetched at this point. He has not had a single down in the NFL. You know, there, there's nothing that we can really go off of at this point. Um, it, it, that's a great opinion and potentially a great prediction, but I can't completely agree, uh, with that statement thus far. So since the NFL draft, right. Yeah. I mean, he's, you know, people can't decide whether he's a tight end or a wide receiver. Like you know, he's out there, his body type looks more that of a wide receiver, you know, he'll probably be on the depth chart. He's going to be a tight end on the depth chart, obviously. Um, but his just his presence brings a lot, uh, you know, his physical stature just reminds people of you know, unstoppable things. Uh, back to, you know, Calvin and, and Randy Moss, as far as their ability to be just freaks of nature athletic. Uh, wise. So, you know, it's interesting to see what's going to happen here um, and something else that's going to be interesting to see because there's going to be some other mix ups there in Atlanta is uh, the recent what we probably all heard the Julio Jones news with Shannon Sharp. Uh, now we know that he doesn't want to return, even though he has a couple of years uh, on his contract left, but, um, you know, they can figure something out there. Obviously, you want the you you have the organization that's been, you were at the Super Bowl a couple of years ago, and it feels like there, there was a, a just something hanging around there, a hangover literally from that. And now it's time to, you know, move on from there. As we can see, it wasn't in the right way. But uh, what do you think it's, you know, the offense is going to look like? What could it have looked like, you know, with Pitts and, you know, Jones there? Now, Pitts is projected to do certain things and all of these projections that have come out prior to the news that Jones was going to leave, even though it was pretty skeptical about the fact that he was going to stay in Atlanta. But with him not being there, what does that, you know, what does that potentially do for this offense and how do they go about not having their star athlete of, you know, for years? Well, I mean, you know, I think it's a beautiful thing of Pitts coming in, but, the topic right now of the Atlanta organization completely is Julio, you know, he's, he's out, he's out, <laughs> you know, and it's right. Shannon Sharp, it's Shannon Sharp, you know, got him to call it out, you know, secretively or not secretively. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. He came out and he made the statement. Um, as far as the offense is concerned as a whole, I mean, it, Atlanta it just lost a huge weapon, you know, if, if he's out, um, that was without a doubt their biggest playmaker and losing your biggest playmaker. I mean, you know, we've, we've all played sports. We know how it works. You know, when you lose a great person and a great player in an atmosphere, I mean, it dulls you down a little bit. And I mean, that's 
how I see Atlanta's offense right now is they're going to be dull to start. I mean, imagine having Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, and Kyle Pitts. I mean, that's that that's pretty big. Right. You know? It would be nice. And yeah, it would be nice. So, I mean, you know, now you got, you know, Calvin Ridley stepping in basically as the number one. And he's pretty much a taller Tyreek Hill, you know, and, and, and he's got great play in him. You know, he he's a heck of an athlete, but he's not Julio Jones, um, not taking away anything from Calvin Ridley. But it it's definitely a big loss for the Falcons. Yeah, and I think it's a big loss for somebody else there who I'm going to bring up next. Um, you know, your quarterback. That was uh, something that's also been in question the last couple of years. He's, you know, he's getting a little bit uh, to that point in, in most quarterbacks' careers that have been in a you know, franchise quarterback for so long to where once they realize they may be over that hump, um, that being, you know, that since the Super Bowl, uh, it's going to be completely different. You know, I'm going to be, you know, like this guy right here. He was going to, you know, when he lost Calvin Johnson, it, it's kind of similar to something like that, how long the tenure was when they were there together. Um, you know, it helps bringing in a guy like Pitt. Stafford didn't get that luxury right away. But, um, you know, the fact that they've known each other and had this chemistry for so long um, and that they've been trying to get back to where they were from a couple of years ago, now you don't have that go-to that Matt Ryan, you know, you're – the organization's questioning how long he's going to stay there. Um, now this instance happens, but he did just recently say that he feels like he has, you know, several years left in the tank um, and told close family and friends, I guess, in Atlanta that he wants to you know, continue to be the franchise quarterback beyond next year. So how do you think that that's going to affect Matt Ryan on the field? Not necessarily with like, the other additions that they've had, but the fact that he no longer has who we go out there. Matt Ryan is a very reliable, honest, humble quarterback. As far as the NFL is concerned, he he's put up his numbers. He's paid some dues. And unfortunately the Super Bowl took a lot away. You know, it took a lot away from him. Like they had that in the bag. And I, I think, it definitely puts a chip on your shoulder, but it definitely knocks a block off at the same time. I mean, he, he lost a little bit of what he had. And Matt Ryan is a 36-year-old quarterback that's been in the league quite some time now. He's been over a 4,000-yard passer since 2011. I mean, in very close in two different years to being a 5,000 passing quarterback. And – he needs to touch that mark. He, he needs to be able to take complete leadership of this team and he needs to be able to focus and get the job done strictly behind that offensive line. And we all know that that offensive line still, you know, they're not a Super Bowl caliber team at this point. They are in a rebuilding stage, but Matt Ryan has to be the voice and the leader of that Atlanta Falcons team without Matt Ryan right now. They're probably the New York Jets. <laughs> I mean, literally, I mean, I mean, they they are probably the New York Jets now. You know, we all know where the Jets stand at this point, too. And, you know, that's a later conversation. But Matt Ryan has put up the numbers. He's been to the Super Bowl before and he needs to be able to have at least a few more years in the league to be able to get that job done. Do I think that he can do it? Absolutely. I believe in the Falcons. But with a new coach recently at the helm as well right you know that that plays a lot in the game too there's a lot of a lot of factors here in Atlanta that you know that's leaving fans fan bases uh you know out there questionable so uh it's Absolutely. very concerning I could tell you know and we talked a little bit before we have in you know the recent couple of weeks about things and it's nice to come out here and you know get a take from it because there's, I don't know another organization that's going through something like this that isn't a dumpster, you know, right now, like, as far as trying to figure everything out, like, they, you know, we're a little couple steps away, like you said, since that from the Super Bowl, and now it seems like it's it, it, something, this is it, like, it's that, it, 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 it absolutely is that hangover effect that you talked about. 
Yep. I mean, you watch Atlanta with or without fans this year. I don't – or this past season, I don't know what would have mattered. I mean, they get up in good games, and all of a sudden it's just a complete wash for them, and they lose within the last – I mean, I'm going to say 13 minutes of the game. That was – Like, it – it's 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 hard to uh, to stand by that and you know watch that game, especially on red zone and everything else that's going on with you, and you want to watch your favorite team, but you, yet you still go back to you know your favorite spot and to see what they went through this past season with all the ups and downs and being ahead, like oh yeah, we're gonna get a victory, <laughs> man. I, all, all you can do is shake your head. Hey, well, you know what. Being in Detroit, man, I'm right there with you, man. We were at the bottom of the, of the list there. And fortunately, you know, how do you score a touchdown and still lose for us, Todd Gurley, in that uh, against the Lions falling down? <laughs> so with no time left, that's the epitome of the season for them. It is. It's you absolutely know, so. an epitome. Yeah. And it's, I don't know, there's a lot to, to work out there in Atlanta. Um, they've got their work cut out for them, obviously, but we'll, uh, We'll see what happens here. And, you know, they've got some – the talent is in their uh, division. You know, they got the defending Super Bowl champs. So, yep. um, that we're going to get into here next. Uh, there's a lot of work to do, and we'll see if uh, they can overcome it. But going into the rest of the division here, let's talk about the Bucks. Um, you know, they retain pretty much – all their entire roster, um, all their core pieces. They didn't have to do much. Uh, they're projected to win 12 to 13 games this year, likely to take the division. Um, you know, we'll see what happens in New Orleans um, as far as them bouncing back too. But you have to say right now, with everything that occurred last year, the way that they handled the Chiefs, the way that we've seen the Chiefs take care of people or, or other teams throughout the past couple of years and what they were able to, you know, the Chiefs looked like they never played a football game before in the Super Bowl, and that was not expected. And with everything that has happened in this offseason and the way that the Patriots have stayed together, um, you can't help but to think that they're going to repeat, you know? Yeah, I mean uh... – I do have a little correction right there, though. Not the Patriots, the Bucks. Right. Oh, did I say the Patriots? <laughs> you did say the Patriots. Oh, I man. Mean, I was thinking hey, the hey, Tom Brady it's, it's, a, it's on everybody's mind as far as, you know, the uh, you know the Tom Brady little switcheroo here. I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's something new when we've seen Tom Brady with one team particularly so long. And now here's the back to back. I was just thinking, you know. No, you know, hey. I, wherever he goes. I hear you. I hear you. But yeah, I mean, you know, Tom Brady is a hell of a quarterback and, you know, out of your favorite university. Um, we, we're not going to get into that, hey, go but, <laughs> but uh, you know, um, no, the Bucks are definitely uh, another contender. Uh, I mean, I would have to say that they would probably be the favorite that roster with, uh, you know, offense and defense and not losing anybody. And then after the season, you know, we start preparing towards the NFL draft, you know, news comes out, you know, Antonio Brown might be the only one not returning. And then they go ahead and fix his contract and make him happy, you know, in, in the smallest state, you know, at least, but he stuck around. And I think he wants another Super Bowl as well. When you have all those guys coming back, you know, that they're ready to reign some terror. Absolutely. I think, I don't see why, you know, to bet against them, it would be very tough right now. Mm -hmm. uh, as I agree. As anything, whether it's to win the division, the NFC, the Super Bowl, um, you know, Tom Brady's going to keep doing his thing, whether he's in New England or he's in Tampa Bay. Uh, hopefully, you know, we'll get used to that or we won't. We'll see what happens here. But um, let's switch over to, uh, to other division rivals here. Uh, talk about the Cheeseheads a little bit with what happens to uh, – that on, on draft day and the all of the skepticism that, that has been had with Rodgers and, and Green Bay from last year when they, you know, did what they did. He's been trying to get a wide receiver. They come in, you know, draft a quarterback. 
he said it's not him. Obviously, you know, there's nothing he doesn't want to uh, have that mindset or, or portray himself like like that. But you can tell that he's frustrated. Uh, I would love to see him get out of the division personally, especially oh, I, the fact I that know you would. Gone now. I but, know you would. Um, <laughs> man, would that be great? But the thing is, like the they've had everything there. You know, the the Packers seem to be they just it's like they almost stray away from themselves in the playoffs or something, and they go more towards what they aren't. And that's why they, you know, there's several instances where teams like in the first half will just pound, 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 pound. They'll just dominate the entire thing. Bears, that's what I'm talking about. They start throwing the ball in the second half, and then they are questioning why they, you know, were up by 10, and then they lose the game by, you know, a touchdown or whatnot. Uh, there's, it just seems like, I don't know, the coaching maybe. Uh, there obviously is miscommunication. Um, and lack of just respect between on-field personnel, the players, and off-field personnel, whether it's, it's coaches or the you know front office. Um, but what do you think is going to happen here with Green Bay? Is Rogers going to return? Uh, he was talking about you know if you guys don't trade me, I'm going to retire. Like what's you know what's going to happen here? Well, you know what? Um, my personal opinion, I kind of hope to see Rogers return. I know that you don't like hearing that. I'm, I'm sorry for you, but I mean, I, I think, I, I think, I think that he might return. And if he does, you know, it'd be really good for him. If, you know, we talked about Julio Jones earlier and I know that green Bay was on the list of tracking down Julio. I don't know if that's possible for him at this point, but getting another high profile wide receiver, at this point, which they did get a good one in the draft. Um, but yet that's, you know, remained to be seen because there's, he has not played any NFL downs yet. Um, I think that that's something that keeps Aaron Rodgers alive. I, you know, as far as the, you know, relationship in the front office with Aaron Rodgers and the GM and, you know, whoever else, um, you know, that, that is a big question. Uh, and I think that as many years is Rodgers has stepped in there, has done what he's did, especially after the Brett Favre era. I mean, you got to put some respect on the guy's name. You have to be able to, you know, let him make a few decisions as long as he's been leading this team. I mean, he can't be forgotten. He's he was MVP last year. You know, he's he's been a hell of a quarterback in the National Football League, and he needs to be heard. If he has ideas, if he has thoughts, you know, what is, look, look what they did for Tom Brady this year. Right. Why, why can't the same thing happen for Aaron Rodgers? I, I agree. I think he just, he hasn't been given the respect that he deserves from, you know, from the fans there in Green Bay. Yes. And, you know, that atmosphere as far as uh, it goes there. Absolutely. But when you have a quarterback that's done everything that Aaron Rodgers has done for you, Exactly. You don't, you know, you go out and do what you did by drafting love and you, you know, he's been asking for a receiver for years, like get him a, you know, get him something up there. Like, yeah, he's got Adams. He's got it. You know, weapons have come along, but. Oh, he, he has, played. he has weapons. He has plenty of weapons. And right. I'm not even necessarily saying that he needed another receiver because his wide receiving core, like another year together with a couple of those young guys. I mean, he he could potentially have had it made, but I even know that after they went ahead and took their wide receiver draft pick that they took this year, they went ahead and released one of one of the wide receivers that Rodgers had just praised within the same week of the draft. So right. how do how do you do that to the guy that leads your team? I I don't know, and I'm not sure you know why he stayed there as long as he had. Uh, obviously, he's still. What did he sign his contract for he, a couple of years ago? I still think that he probably was going through that transition of, well, the fact that they had just come off, well, uh, you know, several runs throughout the NFC, you know, up to the championship and whatnot, but they're straight away from that. Not necessarily straight away from that, literally, but they're, they're declining as far as that goes. And it right. seems like 
at that point, he may have known then and was hoping for that to change, giving it a chance because, like, you know, he's been there um, and that's what he knows and that he's comfortable there. And I think that if I was up, like, I would be giving him what he wants. Like, it's ridiculous. It's unreal that this is what, what we're talking about with the Packers as opposed to who's going to, you know, compete with, you know, are the Packers going to compete with the Bucks? Like now it just, you know, it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case, even if he is there. Like he's not not saying that he's not going to have as good of a season like last year was. It's hard to top that, especially right. with the you know more drama that's come along. So um, it'll be interesting to see what happens there, whether he stays in the division, go to the AFC, please. <laughs> uh, <it's not laughs> anywhere. Uh, but if he does return, um, it, it'll be interesting to see how they handle that in Green Bay, not just um, in front of, you know, the media and in front of us and, and society and whatnot. But you know that things have obviously leaked out and we'll see what happens behind the scenes and whether they can you know, pick it up or not. But uh, somebody else now down there, we'll go back to Florida, uh, speak a little bit about the Jags here with some news. Oh, I figured uh, that's where you were going with this. Uh, oh, man, you good old – Lord praising Tim Tebow. He came back. He is back in the NFL for now, um, looking to make the 53-man roster down there with Urban Meyer in Jacksonville. Not as a quarterback, obviously, as they just took their hope to be franchise quarterback, but um, has the possibility to be used at that position, obviously, when he's going to be a tight end. Um, and they can open up the offense. Uh, they got weapons a, a mass you know the everywhere uh, robinson ejected etn you know, they got chart they got you know uh they signed marvin jones uh you know now like you just completely loaded there offensively in jacksonville and something that you know they take from that that's been talked about a little bit is what is happening in new orleans with Taysom hill opens up their offense allows them defense is just a nightmare for them so this is a potential nightmare for defenses as well, because not only are you, do you have everything without Tebow, but you put him in some kind of, you know, send him in motion. You have some kind of package where you're going to assume he's going to, if he gets a sweep or something or whatever, they get it to him, he's probably going to throw it. He might not. They might just do, run a, you know, you don't know what's going to happen now. This I mean, he, he, he might Ryan. step up five yards and bowl someone over. I mean, you he, never know. It's, it's going to be nuts to see. And Urban Meyer is probably, you know, it's a big transition from being at Ohio State and college football running that style of trickery or whatnot or, um, you know, just not being able to believe what you see necessarily there. But it's still the fact that other teams don't have this privilege and we've seen what it's done for New Orleans. So with just, the, you know, They've just got unreal. They have, you know, Robinson, who's rookie records and doing all kinds of things that he's doing. And, you know, Chark's a beast. Uh, Chanel's a, a monster. They got Marvin Jones Jr. That's your second, that's your third receiver on your depth chart. Come on now, that's ridiculous. And then you draft yeah. ETN, who's going to be possibly playing in the slot and could be coming off some little dumps that's going to be flipped from Tebow as he gets the scissors, you know, handed off to him and the, all kinds of things. So it's crazy to see what's going to happen in Jacksonville. What do you think that this offense can look like with a rookie quarterback, a rookie coach, well, rookie coach in a sense, um, you know, young wide receivers, young uh, running backs. They're just, they're very young. This team has potential to be, you know, not necessarily this year or next year, but in the next couple of years, and you're talking about that core type thing. Uh, this is a, a huge core that could really wreak havoc here in the next five years. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, elaborating on Jacksonville Jaguars, I think that they have a stacked offense. They have to be utilized properly, but got a heck of a duo, you know, in the backfield as far as running backs go with James Robinson, who you, you know, brought up. I mean, he was an undrafted free agent 
and came in and had over a thousand yards and was uh, one of my best fantasy players to go along with that too. <laughs> uh, thank, thanks James Robinson for that. But um, you know, now you add Travis ETN in the mix. Travis ETM has uh, been playing a little bit of in the slot and, and, you know, a little bit of flanker and he's been getting reps in OTAs, you know, at running back as well. And I mean, I think that those two together are pretty much kind of a Nick Chubb and, you know, a Kareem Hunt type of deal. I mean, maybe with a little bit more elusiveness because I think the ETN is a little bit more shifty than Kareem Hunt. Um, but they, I think that they could be great together. Now, is it a slap in the face to James Robinson? No, I think it could probably go 50, 50, or, you know, maybe a little bit under or over. Um, it's just who has the better game. You know, then you talk about the wide receivers, you know, Chark is awesome. He, he's got the size. He's got the leap. He's got the athleticism. I mean, he's something that you definitely look for. If I had to compare him to somebody, he might be like an Allen Robinson of the Chicago bears. Uh, you know, you look at Chenault, Chenault's kind of like his own little weapon. Um, he's, he's, he's a deep threat, like will, like a good Will Fuller, you know, when Will Fuller is, you know, not injured, feeling good. Um, and he can, you know, wreak a lot of havoc on the field. Then you got Marvin Jones. He's put up numbers in Detroit. He's, he's looked good over the years. I mean, you know, they're going to have people, they're going to have two down sideline dudes. They just are going to open yeah. up this field and it's ridiculous absolutely i think jacksonville is definitely a threat to be reckoned with maybe not like you you know not this year or next year like you said but in a few years to come but when we look at the trevor lawrence tim tebow situation there are a lot of questions as to what a coach like urban meyer can really do you know he was awesome down in florida coaching the gators he proved himself up in Buckeye Nation in Ohio. Um, sorry, Buckeyes, but you're, I'm not a fan of yours. But you know, you can't you can't knock it. You know, he he's a great coach. He's a great all around coach, and you know, he was there while Tim Tebow was there. And the other thing too is Tim Tebow, Trevor Lawrence, both Heisman. That that's that's, that's you're right. That that's big time. Um, you know, it, it's not a Mark Ingram. Lamar Jackson situation, you've got one ex quarterback that has gotten bigger and he's still in shape. And, you know, yeah, the coach might help him be able to get onto that roster a little bit better because of the relationship. But now you've got Trevor Lawrence in there. They can mix up a bunch of different things and it could be a crazy offense. I mean, like you said, a sweep, you know, out of a tight end position or kind of like a scissors as to what, you know, a lot of, lower D one college schools run, or even, you know, big high schools run, um, line them up in a slot, you know, bring him in motion, you know, do a couple different things. The only thing that I see being problematic with Tim Tebow is the fact that he's probably not quite as quick as he was in the past because he's put on a lot of weight. He's got a lot more muscle on him and not saying that he's not in shape, but right now he's not as fresh as Trevor Lawrence is. Right. Yeah. And that's, uh, I, I agree. He, he's going to have some work to do as far as the bugs, you know, you can't coming into the NFL and being there at practice and OTAs, whatever rookie camp, which well, he wouldn't have been there, but um, it, it's a whole different ball game. You can't simulate a real game. You know, he hasn't been done that. He's played baseball, I think minor league. Yeah. For the last couple of years, but obviously that's a huge difference from the NFL or just football in general. So. Oh yeah. Just, I mean, it's, it, it's not like a Mike. I mean, maybe you can con kind of compare it to like a Michael Jordan going into the minor leagues because that transition definitely really didn't pay out for him. Yeah. He had hype behind his name and yeah, Tim Tebow had a little bit of hype behind his name too. But I mean, you know, look where both of those guys went, you know, within that transition. I think I think MJ wanted to go play baseball for the Sox. Southside, yeah. by the way. And I, I think Tebow just had no other job offers at that point. So he had to, but MJ in the, in you know, the new generation, in the new I generation. Know, I know what you're Tim, saying. This. Tim Tim Tebow had a name behind him. He had a lot of popularity. And no, right. you know, that that definitely helped his cause as well. Yeah, and and I think if it wasn't for that, he likely wouldn't be here today for, you know, 
fighting for a roster spot. You know, a lot of it has to do with Urban Meyer. Like you said, they were together in Florida. Um, but there's a lot of old history with coaches and players in which it doesn't, you know, ever get rekindled or whatnot. So, but knowing, you know, like we said, Urban Meyer, he's pretty smart. You know, he has his philosophies that I would assume he's transitioned and changed up what he's needed to as far as coming from the NCAA to the NFL because it's definitely not, you know, it's this isn't playing, you know, in, in college football. Like, these are NFL players that know everything about the game, that defensively they, you know, the schemes, all that stuff, it doesn't, the trickery can work. It can, but not like it does at the, you know, other levels below. So it's interesting to see with all these weapons that we talked about uh, what's going to happen. Um, there's a lot of speculation down in the southern part down there with the Jaguars, Atlanta. Are the champs going to repeat? Looks like, you know, and then we come way up north here in Green Bay. We're talking about them. Uh, I'm very excited for this NFL season. There's a lot left. You know, it's only the beginning of June. We have no idea um, what's going to happen. So, do we do we have a hundred days? Is it is it a hundred days today, or was that yesterday? I think that was yesterday. The Thursday first Thursday night kickoff is going to be who is that? Kansas City, right? Dude, there's a lot of good games coming up, and I've been trying to wrap my head around all this football in general. I don't even know what the first game I, is. At I, this know point. A, I know it's a Thursday night game, and but I, I don't remember who's in it. But I all do I do know it. is I'm going to be watching it. Right, <laughs> people are going to be ready. Um, and again, I think this. Yeah, we got the 17 games this year, so it's an extra game. Um, that's also going to you know be interesting to see. It's a factor that teams haven't had to work around before. Um, as far as keeping their depth chart healthy and and trying to stay within that that frame of of staying within the playoffs, so absolutely, uh, it's going to be a great. It already has been a great off season. Um, the drafts happen. We're getting into some more shenanigans here. You know, trades can start being uh, made now. Yeah, and uh, it's past the deadline, so things are going to happen. Uh, we got a couple months here until the season and we've already had all kinds of drama and all kinds of things to talk about. I already know that there's going to be in a week, oh. five more things. So, Oh yeah. There's a lot more to come. I mean, we'll be, uh, we'll be back on here. Well, thank you, man. I'm, I'm really glad that you came on and, and gave us your insight about, you know, the Falcons, obviously you follow them, you know, quite a bit. Shout out to the Vic Jersey back there. Um, it's, yeah, Mike Vick. It was great having you on. You know, we'll have to uh, bring you back here and, and talk about what's to come. We'll see, you know, is it, what do you guys think out there? Is uh, Tebow going to make this 53-man roster with Jacksonville? I don't know. Let us know. Um, comment, like, share. You know, uh, everything's going to be crazy here uh, coming up. So stay tuned for that. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Richard. Hope to see you soon. And peace. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Out.